and welcome back to another episode of Getting to Know You. I am delighted to be joined by Dr. Joy Wan. She is Assistant Professor of Dermatology at Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine, and she has been a very longtime PEDRA member. She's serving on the Early Investigator Committee, and she's also a part of our Exum Accounts Steering Committee. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me, Jen. It's a pleasure to, to be here with you. Yes. So um, let's just jump in with like the beginning of your career story. How did you make it to pediatric dermatology? Oh my gosh. Um, well, I guess at the very beginning of my medical education, I, I was always interested in working with kids and I actually wanted to be a pediatric cardiologist. I don't know why, but I, I thought the heart was cool and I liked working with kids. I figured that's what I was going to be. Um, and then I didn't really discover dermatology until third year of medical school as part of rotations. And I did my very first elective um, with um, the CHOP pediatric dermatology folks. Um, and that really was what um, ended up leading me to go into pediatric dermatology. I mean, it was a fantastic group of folks um, that I got to work with, Albert Ann, Jim Treat, were kind of the two main people there at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, I just really loved, you know, the, the patients that they cared for, just the types of encounters, um, you know, the material of pediatric dermatology. And anybody who knows Albert and Jim, right, um, knows how awesome they are. And so it was really great to get to work with them. And that really inspired me to kind of, you know, develop a career in, in pediatric dermatology. So um, ended up, you know, still caring for kids, um, but obviously, um, you know, looking really only at the skin now and not even carrying a stethoscope, right? So I'm a little, <laughs> a little bit far from kind of where I thought I would end up, but um, I'm so happy to be a pediatric dermatologist today. That is so exciting. You know, I hear that so much, you know, dermatology wasn't even on my radar. Kids, I've always wanted to work with kids. And then they, everybody makes it to their third year medical school rotations. And suddenly it's like, oh, dermatology, everybody gets so excited, which I love. I love hearing that. So let's talk about your research focus. Is there a particular disease or area that you like to focus on? Yeah, so right now, a lot of my research is focused on atopic dermatitis or eczema. Mm -hmm. um, and, and part of that is because I'm an epidemiologist. So I like working with data and, um, you know, doing a lot of statistical analyses. And, um, you know, we like common diseases in a lot of ways because there's massive amounts of data that we can potentially collect. So mm -hmm. um, eczema being how common it is, um, especially in a pediatric population, was sort of a, a natural area for me to kind of focus on. Um, just because, you know, there's, there are a lot of patients, um, the, the disease affects, we have the ability to make a huge impact in that population with our type of research. Um, and then as, as an epidemiologist, you know, we have the tools to really be able to kind of work um, with all of that kind of patient data that's available. So, um, so a lot of my work is focused on atopic dermatitis. And in particular, I'm really interested and just understanding its impact on kind of life in children, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's it's a skin disease, and you know we certainly take care of kind of the skin in of itself as as clinicians oftentimes. Um, but the disease has so many impacts beyond just you know the rash and the itch, right? Just kind of the visible manifestations. I mean, we hear about children not sleeping because of their skin disease, um, you know, not being able to potentially pay attention in school, and so there's a lot of growing literature around atopic dermatitis and its impact on things like attention and memory and mood and um, a lot of these kind of um, psychiatric and psychosocial, you know, outcomes. And so I have a particular interest in understanding how um, eczema influences all of these things, especially in children, mm -hmm. um, because if, if there is a tremendous impact there, we also need to be able to develop ways that we can actually help kids with respect to a lot of those kind of non-skin, right? Sort of those extra cutaneous or kind of life and psychosocial um, impacts of the disease. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you hear it all the time. There's so much that goes into living with eczema and it's not just the child, it's the whole family that's affected. Yeah. And I hear that from parents all the time. And um, and I love that you have sort of devoted your research and your career to addressing that very particular thing. Are you working on any research projects currently that are on that topic or what's going on right now in your research? Yeah, yeah, no. So um, we have a couple of projects going on that are really kind of centered around understanding the influence of eczema 
on things like cognition. So the ability mm. to kind of learn and process new information and knowledge, um, as well as its impact on things like behavior and emotion. Um, and so what sort of sets apart some of the stuff that we're doing now from stuff that's been done to date is that we're really trying to rigorously and kind of comprehensively measure all of these outcomes. So doing sort of a whole battery of kind of rigorous testing for cognitive function, for example, doing a lot of different um, batteries of assessments to assess emotion in particular, assess behavior. And we're trying to do this in kids across a wide spectrum of um, eczema disease severity. So really trying to capture both kids with very mild skin disease and those with you know, very severe disease. And, and our hypothesis is that the more severe your skin disease is, you probably have a more tremendous sort of um, burden, right, associated with it um, with respect to kind of these psychosocial um, symptoms and outcomes. So um, that's sort of ongoing work. We're trying to actively recruit patients um, into those types of studies and, and also working with some big data that we have access to um, that can also look at some of these relationships as well, although probably not to the to the degree of detail that we would like to. So we're sort of doing a, a couple of kind of synergistic studies, I should say, mm -hmm. um, to try to tackle that question a little bit. Um, and then, you know, sort of hoping, you know, beyond that, you know, once we sort of really characterize some of these relationships, um, as I alluded to earlier, really trying to think of ways in which we can figure out which which populations of kids, right, which of our patients may need actually interventions that can help them, right, to, um, to blossom um, kind of psychosocially and, and such and to remove any impact of the eczema on some of these outcomes. And so we have to figure out which kids really need those interventions and then also what those interventions may look like. So those are hopefully kind of future areas that some of our current work will take us in, in the coming years. Well, Joy, you've just managed to answer all of my upcoming questions with your very beautiful answer. <laughs> um, that it's it's all really fascinating work, and I I can see how that research is going to directly affect families in a probably not too far distant future, and that's pretty exciting. Does it, is that something that like keeps you excited about research is knowing that like you're going to be getting an answer that's going to be changing lives. Absolutely. I, I think that's really what drew me into research is that, you know, you can really make an impact, right, um, in clinical care and, and not just, you know, sort of individual patient care, um, but also kind of patient care across sort of a, a you know, large kind of population, right? Um, and so to be able to, you know, discover new things and then take those discoveries into kind of, you know, or translate those discoveries, I should say, into kind of changes in practice, right? Um, or improving interventions, optimizing outcomes. I think that's really what's the most exciting part about research is that we're really contributing to the fields and, and making headway and, and improving lives ultimately um, for patients. So um, yeah, that that's definitely what kind of keeps me interested. And in, in, you know, as I continue to see patients in my day-to-day -day kind of practice, you know, some of these issues are things that parents bring up. And, mm -hmm. and so you know that these are things that families, you know, worry and, and care about. And, and again, you know, we want to be able to get them more specific answers, right, that are evidence-based um, and also answers that we can act upon. So um, I'm, I'm really hopeful that, you know, these things will lead to kind of meaningful improvements and quality of life for our kids and their families. Oh, absolutely. So changing gears just a little bit, I'm curious how you've navigated the balance between being a clinician and a researcher. How do how does that work for yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's tough, but also at the same time, you know, a synergistic sort of blend and mm. and I'm obviously not the first person to, you know, sort of have a have a career that that sort of bridges both of those things. Plenty of you know senior and other junior um, investigators are, are like me in that respect. Um, but for me, you know, as as a clinical and patient oriented researcher, you know, what I see um, in my patients and um, you know the the um, all, all of the symptoms and kind of concerns that patients bring to me are really good fod fodder for mm -hmm. you know research questions because those are the things that you know mean something right to um, our kids and, and their families and, you know, taking that into sort of the, the lab, so to say, even though I don't, you know, run a, a, right. sci a wet lab, you know, with like pipettes and things like that. Um, we still have a lab at the end of the day, you know, to really try to um, hone in on those questions and to, again, try to get answers to them. Um, and so it, it's been really great to sort of 
bridge those two things and to really connect them, um, especially given the, the line of research that I'm, that I'm you know, really involved in. And so, you know, taking those clinical questions into the kind of dry lab, as we call it, mm -hmm. um, and running, you know, observational studies and hopefully one day kind of more interventional studies to really understand a lot of the dynamics of, of what's going on. Um, in, in our patients, um, and then hopefully, you know, to find answers and, like I said, interventions that will um, help improve outcomes in, in the end. Um, so, yeah, so I think it's been a really great, you know, blend. I think it's a great setup for a lot of clinician investigators, right, to be able to care for patients and to also do research, um, and, and then just, you know, trying to kind of take it back and forth, right, taking what you find in, in kind of your research back to your clinical care, and then, you know, the other way around, obviously, as I mentioned earlier. Yeah, I, you know, I've, I've talked to so many PEDRA members who are, you know, doing the same thing you are. They've got a clinical practice and they're working in, on research. Um, but nobody's quite phrased it the way you have in the, bridging the two. So that, I mean, and I think that is a really perfect illustration for just like how like the synergy of PEDRA and having like you are our wonderful clinician scientists and our patient groups, like there's so many bridges happening and there's this constant circle of discussion and feedback. And I think, I mean, personally, I think that's what makes PEDRA so powerful, but it's just really exciting to hear the way you phrase that. It really yeah. puts a picture in my mind. Oh, absolutely. I, I think, you know, there's been a really strong effort to involve patients, right, in the research that we sort of, in the ivory tower, right, in academia sort of conduct. And it's so important because they have a lot of um, really great perspectives and important perspectives that we have to take into account. And so, you know, as, as, as you've probably seen, others have seen, you know, a lot of funding agencies are now looking to make sure that you actually have, you know, a patient voice, a patient perspective in the research that you're doing. And, and that's why it's been really fun to be part of, you know, the NEA PEDRA um, steering committee for the Eczema Counts project, because, you know, it's not just, you know, a few of us researchers and the PEDRA team, right, but we also have patients um, who are part of the steering committee. And that's been really nice to kind of engage with one another and you know, to hear where we really align and some of our perspectives and wants and, you know, kind of curiosities. And then where also, you know, we may have differences in, in our perspectives, not, not necessarily in conflict with one another, but I think really ultimately just enriching, right? To kind of hear, oh yeah, like, you know, patients might be really, you know, interested in this. And we didn't really think about that, you know, from the researcher perspective. And so I think, you know, really um, be able to engage um, very closely with, with one another, you know, as researchers, investigators, with patients and, and families is super critical. And I think, you know, especially for pediatric, you know, based research, it, it, oh, yeah. it is so important, you know, um, to really get at kind of um, how disease and impacts, not just the, the child, but the whole family. Um, so, so yeah, Pedro has been doing wonderful things with respect to kind of getting the patient voice on board and, and collaborating with, you know, patient organizations like the NEA, for example. So that, that's been great. It's really exciting. I, I can't wait to see what comes out of the eczema counts, gains and challenges. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And it's certainly been fantastic having you on the steering committee. Uh, you just bring such a, a, a rich knowledge and passion for that patient you know, taking what the patient wants into the research lab, as you said, and then bringing back the lab to the patient. It's, it's really exciting to see that work happening. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's so fun to be part of, part of that. Good. Well, before I let you go, is there anything about yourself, a uh, personal fun fact or funny story that you want to share with the network? Oh gosh. Um, well, I think I've told you before, I'm, I'm a pretty boring person. <laughs> Everybody says that I don't and know nobody that I is boring now, you know, as, as, as an adult, but um, when I was younger, I was, I was um, very much into art um, and, and perhaps maybe there's a connection to like being interested in German, kind of the visual aspects of it. But mm. when I was younger, I, I um, loved art and um, actually won a contest um, when I was, I don't know, nine or 10 years old um, for the NFL the National Football League. And um, it was some national contest to create some sort of drawing for some campaign of theirs and I actually won it. 
and I got sent all of this NFL gear, you know, <laughs> to my house. And I, I didn't watch football. I was, you know, into art and, and reading books. I didn't, yeah, I had no idea, you know, but I got all of this oh Washington Redskins gear. Um, oh my gosh. Team when I was a kid growing up here. Oh. Um, and so I just had all of this sort of, you know, Washington Redskins memorabilia all over the place. And like, oh. you know, all, all, all my friends from school who were into football wanted like a, you know, this and that. And I, I oh didn't gosh. care for it. For, uh, for too much of it but anyway that, that's uh, the only fun fact I can I can think of, uh, of I love that do you remember what your art was do you remember what you did? I, I I can't remember it was it was a, a, a campaign for something like we had to illustrate some sort of slogan and, and again you know I, I don't remember the specifics of the slogan um, but we, we did it through school. Like we all, you know, sort of made something and submitted yeah. it and lo and behold, like who knew, right? Like my <laughs> mind got selected for this thing. Um, but they, they clearly didn't realize that I was not, you know, an, an NFL aficionado. So. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is too funny. I think that's a great story and you are not boring. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me on Pedra's Getting to Know You. It has been delightful talking to you. And thank you for all you do for Pedra and for pediatric dermatology. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure to be a part of Pedra. And I, I just love seeing kind of our community grow um, oh, as too. more and more folks, you know, join, join us. So it's been fantastic. I feel the same way. Thank you so much to Dr. Joy Wan for joining me on this episode of Getting to Know You. You can find more episodes online at www.pedoresearch.org forward slash G-T-K-Y. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Research. Stay tuned for more Getting to Know You's.